I'm Anil Kumar and here is a test question for you, right? So we try to take it as a test. We have already done few similar videos which will help you to understand the concept of sketching graph of transformed function. The question here is, we are given f of x equals to square root of x. You need to sketch g of x which is equal to f of within brackets minus 2 times x minus 3 bracket close plus 1. Now you could use two methods. One we are saying use graph as a method itself, graphical method. The other one is using key points, right? So you could use both or either one of them, right? So these are the two methods which you can adopt to sketch the graph. Before sketching the graph, I would like you to describe the transformation also, right? So uh, let's begin by describing the transformation. You can actually pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestion, right? So let's write down the transformations now. Uh, I'll prefer to write transformations in order so that we can follow that order and sketch the graph also, right? So uh, looking into the transformations, we can go from left to right and describe each factor one by one. So minus two, what does that mean? Minus means reflection on y-axis and two is horizontally compressed. So, so what we have here is reflection on y-axis. That is the first thing which we notice and second is horizontally compressed by a factor of how much? Half, right? 1 over k by a factor of half. So these are the two transformations which are kind of multiplication, right? And then what we have here is a translation. So, so we could combine horizontal and vertical translation and write them together. So minus 3 really means moving 3 units to the right and 1 means 1 unit so we can write here uh, translate three units right and one unit up. so that is how you can actually describe the transformation another important criteria here is also to consider the key points so if we have a transformation like this, and let us say if x and y are the coordinate points on the graph of the function f of x, then what are going to be the corresponding coordinate points on the function itself, the transformed function? Let us consider that also. The points will be the x values will be minus half of the original plus 3. So we can write them as minus half of x plus 3. So that is how the x values will be. The y values will have plus 1 value. So we'll have y plus 1. So these are the transformed points, right? So, so every point here, let's say if p is a point here, then the image will have those kinds of coordinates. That's the idea, right? So that helps us to figure out the points and then sketch the graph using key points. Now let's write down the key points for square root x function and then for g of x, which is that transform function. And we'll use this transformation to write down the key points. So key points for any square root function are 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. So these are the key points. Now, let us do our calculation and write down the transform points. So I'll write down the x values first and then the y values. For the x values, we have to do half of the original x value and then add 3. So half plus 3 will give me 3 here. Half is half plus 3. So, so I, I'm sorry, it is minus half uh, since there is a reflection also. So minus half plus 3 
minus half plus 3 is 2 and a half with a minus sign, right? So, uh, I mean, 2 and a half plus 3, right? Minus half of 4 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1 plus. And uh, half of 9 with a minus sign is minus 4.5. Minus 4.5 plus 3 will give me minus 1.5, right? So these are my uh, x values. For y values, we just have to add 1 to the existing y values. So 1 up. So 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So what we get here are the new image points. We can plot these points one by one and then sketch the graph. First point for us is 3 and 1. So 1, 2, 3 and 1. So that is the first point. Then we have 2 and a half, 2. So 2 and a half and 2 brings it to this point. 1 and 3. 1 and 3 is this point. Minus 1.5 and 4. So 1.5 and 4 means that point, right? So once you join these points, you get your transformed function, right? So it is kind of like this. So this is g of x. So using points very easily and accurately, you can sketch this function. Now we will use the graphing technique to sketch this function without calculations, right? So we'll do steps one by one. The first step is reflection on y-axis, right? So reflection on y-axis means at origin it remains there itself. The key point here when reflects on y will move to this position, perfect. This key point moves to minus four, so it comes here and the other key points kind of goes away. But we can use these points and uh, sketch the function itself and this is what I'm calling as minus, uh, I mean f of minus x, right? So this is what I've sketched. Now we will do half of that. That is, the function gets horizontally compressed by a factor of half. That really means all these points x values will be multiplied by half. So they will come half the way, uh, kind of like this. So this is minus 4, it moves to that point. And the point which should have been at 9 will move to minus 4.5. So think about that point, which was y value at uh, 3. So at 3, we have minus 4.5, okay, 4 and 5. So that is kind of that last point. 0 remains as 0. So let me connect these. Okay. And extend, right? So so what we have here is f of minus half x. You get the idea. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It gives you f of minus 2x. Horizontally compressed by a factor of half, right? Now, the last stage is to check if we get the same curve or not. So what we are going to do now is for each and every point we'll do translation three units right one up. So so let's begin from here one two three right one up perfect. The second point is here so we go there one this is one two three and one up perfect. Now this point one two three one up that is right. Now this is 1, 2, 3, 1 up. So that is how we get the same points. Do you see that? No calculations involved. We get perfectly the same graph. So that is how you should be sketching the graph for the transform function. Now, you can also write domain and range of the function, right? So write domain and range of transform function, right? That should give you good information and insight to transform function. I hope that really helps. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.